What's good, football gamers? It's your boy, Fen, checking in with another College Football 25 YouTube video. And in this one, we're going to touch on some of the biggest notes from the huge patch that just dropped for CFB 25 this morning. And now there's a lot here, so I'll link the patch notes themselves in the description below. But we got a ton of what we were asking for. And the degree to which the devs seem to be paying attention to the community at this point in the game is really encouraging. There are a couple things left over that I think the community would like to see adjusted and apparently some new bugs that are getting emergency patched. I don't have confirmation on that, but I'll let you know what I know here. So here go the notes for the first big serious patch of the college football year, and you can see it's a lot. It's a whole big scroll. I'll try to keep things as brief as possible, but I want to be thorough enough so that you know specifically what got touched up here, and it's a lot of stuff, like I said, that we've been asking for. So right from the top, we have gameplay, new shotgun formations uh, in a total of 35 playbooks. You can pause uh, there and zoom in to see the particulars if you'd like, and I have to eat crow on this one. If you've watched uh, my earlier videos, I was not anticipating that we would get a tune to pursuit angles. I know it was a pain point, especially from a lot of the competitive players just did not feel like you were getting adequate help from your AI defenders. And that has indeed already been tuned. I was wrong. I thought that might be later if it was going to be ever, but great that they've been paying so much attention. Uh, and that did indeed get touched up a little bit here, specifically that it's going to be behavior that further differentiates players with a high pursuit rating versus a lower one. The devs know here that they're just going to keep an eye on things and they could adjust that going forward, which is also encouraging. Also in the list, it's created some hilarious clips, depending on whether or not you're on the business end of it, uh, but they did indeed reduce frequency of broken tackles, specifically from trailing defenders. I think that's great news. In a couple instances, it was looking a little bit uh, unrealistic. Freaking switch stick, bro. Come on, man. Hello? Oh, shit. Can I please catch him? Please catch him. Please, please, please. <laughs> no, no. Ah! They got various instances of rare bugs for broken plays. Fix the issue where you could not use 425 or 335 formations in a custom playbook. Also, fix where spiking the ball in online modes was not working as a part of the turbo tempo system. Fix that issue we were having with speed options where the running back wouldn't follow the quarterback. It would kind of just bail out. They mentioned speed options specifically here. Hopefully, we see that in the other instances it was happening in as well, but worth noting that they do specify speed option for the patch. A couple AI quarterback adjustments to make things a little more realistic. Less illegal man down field penalties during RPO plays from your own line. And the devs do note here that for the best chance at this actually working out the way that you want it to, uh, make sure you actually pick a receiver before the running back gets hands on a ball. Defensive backs will get a better ability to effectively shed blocks on the perimeter. Increased speed penalty for running out of stamina during a play. More TikTok nerfs here. Quarterback scrambles behind a line of scrimmage will lose stamina at a faster rate. I like this one. Increase the re reward players receive for shading inside or outside correctly in man coverage versus passing routes. It felt like you could get that correct a lot of the time and it just wouldn't matter. So I'm excited to see what that winds up looking like. They adjusted false start chances when you make pre-play adjustments late in the play clock. Feels like that was happening at a pretty high frequency. Hopefully adjusted means reduced here. Nerfed Wildcat. Pour one out. It's been real. It's been fun. And at times it has not been real fun. Wildcat. RIP. And now they say here they made an adjustment to the Wildcat unbalanced motion zone play. I don't know if when they say adjusted, they mean just took out because I'm not certain. I saw a couple comp bot guys uh, tweeting this morning about a particularly cheesy Wildcat uh, motion play getting taken out of the Arizona book completely. I'm not sure if that's the one they're talking about. Reduce effectiveness of multiple laterals in a single play and adjusted thresholds to receive the most effective juke and spin moves. Curious. It'll probably take some testing as to whether those thresholds actually went up or down, but I'm sh I think they're going to mention it in a second here. I did hear that they nerfed the bejesus out of that Platinum 360 ability. Press animations will work better against the takeoff ability now. An updated pass protection mechanic to only include the right running back in the protection if they are already on a block or a block and release assignment. Under the ability heading, the big one was they updated the coloring of platinum tier abilities to further distinguish the look that they had between silver abilities. They looked pretty similar before. They made them purple 
now. So they kind of stand out. Platinum abilities will look a little bit different now. And here goes that rebalancing of the gold and platinum tiers of the juke and spin abilities like 360 and sidestep. They were just a little bit too effective. It was fun. Again, the clips were hilarious in some instances, but I don't think that's what they is something they wanted in the game so that in, did indeed get the predictable nerf and a couple other more slight adjustments here a rebalancing of the platinum tier of the extender ability and slightly rebalance the effectiveness of gold and platinum tiers of the quick jump ability i know that's another one uh, a lot of the great players are saying is super overpowered and made some adjustments to the tier levels found on the texas front seven dynasty mode did not get left out of the patch and we love to see that to start, they fixed an issue where players are unable to have more than 20 created coaches at one time. An online dynasty league, that should be up to the appropriate 32 now. Let me know if it is. They fixed up summaries and box scores. They fixed up news stories, and they introduced a new playoff bracket screen that just ma makes a little more sense. Uh, they kind of have it in one flow chart rather than the two-sided version that we had previously. Probably my favorite bit from the whole note is that they discovered that FCS Southeast, Midwest, and Northwest were secretly using professional players and passing them off as collegiate players, gave them sanctions, and ensured they are now using properly rated players. But for this change to go into effect, you'll need to create a new dynasty. I don't think we see this verbiage uh, in the dev note that we have to create a new dynasty outside of this FCS tune, but I am curious to see whether the other dynasty fixes will be effective for stuff that we already have existing. They both reduce dynamic attendance penalties for playing FCS teams, so you won't be playing to an empty stadium hopefully anymore, and also increase dynamic attendance in rivalry games. Pretty cool note here, they retune the toughest places to play formula to reduce the impact that large stadiums have on toughest places to play, and instead increase the value of filling the stadium and winning games at home historically. Great news for our longer play dynasties, especially if you're starting on a low star school. They reduce the impact of raw crowd size, increase the impact of historical win rate, and also increase the impact of attendance rate. Just visually, they increase the accumulation of pride stickers, particularly for defensive players and offensive linemen, reduce the chance to transfer penalty for players rated below 90 overall, change up some coach talents on a Wyoming offensive coordinator specifically, and added and updated defensive schemes and playbooks for the following teams, you could zoom in or pause to see. And as a dev note, for this change to go into effect, we do see it more than once. That verbiage, you'll need to create a new dynasty there. So good that they're telling us that about the Wyoming OC and also defensive schemes and playbooks. Might be worth it to just go ahead and, and start something fresh. I know we're going to see here in a second the visit glitch patched up as well, but let's see what else they got. And a couple of tunes to Heisman logic, I guess you could call it. I guess offensive linemen were appearing in preseason Heisman watch for future seasons. I had not seen that before, but I have no problem with it just to go on the record as a former big dog myself uh, and they updated the Heisman watch logic to reduce the value of receiving touchdowns it's a good thing we already got Dylan Braithwaite wide out at Rutgers University of New Jersey both of his what else we got and now on recruiting let's slow down a second to make sure we don't miss anything in here from the devs our primary goals for this update to were, were to remove most of the recruiting strategies that were discovered during early access wait was this targeted what do you mean by that hold on well we were cooking and to smooth out the pain points our players were reporting, recruiting is a delicate balance as we want to try to make things as realistic as possible while also allowing players to live out their football fantasies. With that in mind, we decided to introduce additional recruiting logic. Okay, new stuff to find out and balance changes. So they fixed up an issue where teams are pursuing too many quarterbacks in high school, reduced number of unrecruited four and five stars early in the season, and increased the number of players that the AI will pursue at one time. And another dev note, uh, they're striving here to decrease the number of players that go unrecruited until late in the cycle specifically, uh, and also slightly reducing how aggressive the AI could be with those recruits once they start to recruit them. So essentially, they're going to have to spread out their hours a little more, it sounds like. And they remind us here, our goal is to deliver a fun but balanced recruiting experience that feels rewarding to all players. We'll monitor the impacts these changes have on the overall recruiting experience and to continue to adjust as needed. That's some of the favorites some of my favorite things they've been saying around the patch note just around the game in general the devs are so invested in making sure this is not just a good game now but it continues to be so and can adapt and respond and change based on the needs of the community and what we're enjoying the most and the fact that they're paying so much attention is i think great news for us and here it is visits fixed an issue where you could not schedule visits for recruits in certain situations namely when you should have been able to schedule recruits. I got comms from Bordeaux on Twitter uh, this morning uh, that it's working. 
holy cow, that might be worth the restart in and of itself. But great news there was total handcuffs in the recruiting races, especially when it was getting sweaty. Big W. A couple more fixes along those lines, but also a tuning of visit influence effects. They remove the initial influence when scheduling a visit. I didn't actually know we were getting any, but okay. Increase disparity between winning and losing a game during a visit. We knew that that was going to be important, but it looks like they made it even more so. They tune the logic for game stakes to better account for ranked teams, and they increase the penalty for choosing a visit activity that the team does not have a high grade in or the player is not interested in. So good news there on visits top to bottom. On Super Sim, more stuff that we've really been asking for. They increase handoff rate for simulated RPOs to increase the number of running plays there and various tuning fixes to increase the gap between good and bad teams and players. That's what we wanted from the devs. We're going to continue to monitor the simulation results to ensure that teams and players are performing within expected ranges. Importantly, including reducing frequency of upsets, uh, which I think is good, especially once you get to the college football play, if you want to kind of line it up against some scrubbly teams and it felt kind of anticlimactic to me frequency of up upsets based on preseason projections and expected win totals on the polls they increased the loss penalty for schools with more than one loss they also increased the weighing of conference prestige in the poll calculation which I think is good news if you're playing in a uh, smaller conference, obviously. Also reduce the variance in college football poll logic versus the media and coaches. We were seeing some pretty big variance and discrepancies there. So it looks like they are, you know, they're gonna fall a little more in line. On custom conferences and custom schedules, they fixed an issue in conference rules where divisions were changed to off, even if they were supposed to be on. They fixed an issue where the independence tab disappeared when removing all teams from that spot address some UI issues around conference title games, specifically for CUSA uh, and the Pac-12, addressed UI issues around Dynasty Team Select, appropriately respecting custom conference moves, and updated text in the team header on the custom schedule screen. Kind of surprising here that Road to Glory was also fairly heavily involved in the patch. They added an additional scenario and NIL content, fix some issues where you get a scenario reward screen that didn't line up with your received bonuses, Issue where users were getting skill points maxed out after completing a practice. Good. The 99 glitch is done. That was some dorky stuff, man. Just play a game. You know what I mean? Why bother? Fix a crash when quitting a position battle. Reworked wear and tear. User interface to show position appropriate ratings and impacts. A uh, little more relevant information there. Fix an issue where you can't equip a mental ability during the player creation flow. If you go into settings first. An issue where meter mental progress is not tracked during bye weeks. Also an issue where it's impossible to lose coach trust once you max it out. User interface issue to related to the display of coach trust when a user's close to maxing it out. Fix an issue where you can't upgrade your player during bye weeks, that's a W. Also fix up issues around text messages and displaying weekly energy in a meter screen. Fix issues with mental goals not tracking correctly or reaching platinum status correctly. An issue where backing out of the team select step in Road to Glory can soft lock the mode and uh, an issue where a player can continue to work on academics after graduating early. I wonder, we saw in our Road to Glory run that if you redshirted and still got A's your first three years, that that condition didn't apply. I don't know if that's what they're talking about, uh, but we'll we'll look to see. And for college football ultimate team, one of the biggest ones for me as a more casual player out of that mode was that the best lineup would change of like visuals in your playbook and stuff. And every time you got a new a few new players and you wanted to just, you know, reset your lineup to the best uh, to make things easy for yourself, you'd also have to change back some other stuff. Uh, and it looks like they fixed that. Fix the halftime crash when you're kicking off during playing champs. Attributes will be reflected correctly after a player item has been up upgraded now on the face of the player card. Love this, squad's getting some love. Fixed an issue with squads 3v3 that prevented two users from being able to connect to the game. Also fixed a crash with house rules touchdown tango that triggered when the play clock reached zero. The yardage marker will now be displayed within the conditions in challenge details. Fix up an issue that was causing users to air out to the main hub when trying to access the auction house and some stability issues for users entering ultimate team for the first time. There's some more particulars in here. It looks kind of just more nitty gritty. Uh, but again, I'll have this all linked below so you can check out the specifics there if you'd like to. On presentation bits of the patch, they added some new uniform pieces for Baylor, Oregon, Iowa State, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Bowling Green, Northwestern, UTEP, Boise State, New Mexico State, App State, Texas State, 
Louisiana, New Mexico, and South Alabama. I think a couple of those might have got leaked on X a little bit early, uh, but some new uniforms if you're a fan or playing with any of those teams. New uniform pieces special for 2024 for TCU, Arkansas, Missouri, and Baylor. And updates to a few stadiums as well. The Holiday Bowl at Texas State, Kansas, Kennesaw State, Oklahoma State, Wake Forest, UL Monroe and Nebraska. The Wake Forest one, I think, is a brand new stadium. Curious to see what that winds up looking like. The USC mascot's not going to disappear during the opening ceremony anymore. Fix an issue where the incorrect mascot would appear during different situations and restored opening chance for Penn State, FSU, and Tennessee on Xbox Series S. Good news there. And the very last note in the patch notes, and it was plenty, is on the road to the college football playoff, and they did a pretty game-changing adjustment here with a tier rebalancing and reconstruction. They went from the three-tier format that that game mode launched with to now a five-tier format. So you're going to want to tap back in to see where some of your favorite teams to play with wound up in there. Now five tiers of distinction rather than just three. I feel like that's going to be great for the longevity of that mode and to sign off like the college football team did just here we've been in awe of how passionate you all are about college football 25 and we can't wait to see your feedback and gameplay thank you all so much for your continued support what school have you chosen to represent? Let us know. You can let me know in the comments as well. Big thanks to the dev team on College Football 25 for putting this together. This The notes are thorough. It touched up on so much that we wanted to see adjusted. Uh, and I think, like I said earlier, it's really encouraging going forward. And now, just before I let you go, I've kept my ear to the streets and been scrolling around X to see you know, how everyone's experiencing the new patch from Mills at Mills Twitch. Do not edit your scheme or playbook in Dynasty right now. You can edit them with Edit Coach, but there's a bug that will edit your roster if you use the scheme and playbook option. From what I've gathered, they're working on a fairly emergent fix for that glitch specifically. You still can't change numbers on incoming freshmen in Dynasty. I know that's been a big ask. I'm a little surprised it wasn't included in this one, but I would expect that in the relatively near future. And some more fringe, although valid ask from the community that I've heard as far as addressing the scum kick meta and some better ways to counter that or just kind of nerfing it out of the game and zone defense as well, maybe being ripe for a patch. And if they took a look at pursuit angles, it is incredible that maybe they'll also tune up zones just a bit as well. So is it perfect? No, but what is? I think they shot about 90% from the field on this first big patch. We got some huge issues adjusted. I know as a Dynasty player myself, I'm super excited to tap back in with all the changes they made there, particularly with the visit glitch to see how well we could really be doing in recruiting. And they tuned up some logic in there as well. So some of the R strats might need some retesting. You'll have to stay tuned for future videos to see what we could crank out on that front. I've been Fend. You've been great. Can't wait to see you next video. Peace. Ooh.